All right, um, we just finished stocks, dividends. Now we're going to do stock splits and uh, cover a couple of other topics like preferred dividends. Um, the way companies really reduce their uh, price per share and increase their number of shares outstanding is by the stock split. The stock split is uh, a very uh, frequent transaction, well, across companies, but you'll see you'll see splits for a company like Apple or Google, Microsoft um, happen from time to time. All right. Now, um, for common stock splits, there's no journal entry. So in this example, Pools Incorporated declares a two-for-one split. It will affect authorized, issued, and outstanding shares. It will also impact the market price per share. However, it isn't a mathematical uh, effect. So if the market price was originally nine, it would be in the neighborhood of 450, but you know the market values whatever it wants to value. And uh, actually what the research has found is that when companies split, it usually means management, the, the market interprets it as management's uh, optimistic about future earnings growth. So, uh, you know, instead of 450, it might be 451 or 452 or 453. But we are going to affect par value, shares authorized, shares issued, and shares outstanding. And it would impact the shares in Treasury as well. So you're going to take, and we're only going to do forward splits. There are reverse splits, um, but we're going to just do forward splits. So if there are 12 million shares authorized, in this case, it's 2 to 1 to be 12 million times 2. The shares issued are going to be 10 million times 2. And the shares outstanding are going to be 9 million times 2. And the par value is going to be 50 cents divided by 2. So we'll have 24 million authorized, 20 million issued, 18 million outstanding so this is authorized issued and outstanding which means we have two million in treasury after the split and a 25 cent par value okay and there's no journal entry so we don't have to have an entry for this all right <clears throat> Okay, now we're getting into preferred stock. Um, the main feature that we're going to carry forward, especially when we get to EPS, is cumulative versus non-cumulative. So if you have preferred stock, it's not like debt. You're not required to get a payment every year, like an interest payment like you do with debt. Um, but for cumulative preferred stock, let's say you didn't get your dividend last year, you didn't get it the year before, this year they're declaring a dividend, well, before the common stockholder can get anything, they have to pay out your two prior years of dividends that you didn't get. Okay? Any year you don't get dividend or the full dividend is a past dividend. And the total sum of all past dividends is called dividends and arrears. All right? And the other part we're going to have is the current year's dividend. And if you have non-cumulative preferred, you're always entitled to the current year's dividend as is cumulative. These other features are going to be good to know when we get to EPS, but you just, uh, at this point, we really just need to know about them. We're not going to do anything with them. We are going to calculate the preferred dividend and cumulative preferred versus non-cumulative will matter. But let's just go through them while we're here. Convertible means that you can hand in the preferred stock and get a set number of uh, common shares callable means the corporation can call can buy the bond the excuse me can buy the the preferred stock back typically at a set price redeemable means that the investor the holder of the preferred shares can force the company to buy back the shares at a set price redeemable preferred so redeemable redeemable preferred is a liability classified as a liability so it's kind of weird it'll say preferred stock but if it's preferred redeemable it will be classified as a liability okay so participating this one is the most complicated 
Um, we are not going to discuss it the uh, as in a quantitative setting. There is an optional problem. The last example is participating, but basically it goes something like this. You'll have the what we're going to learn is the normal preferred dividend. You get that. So let's say there's a two hundred thousand dollar dividend. Two hundred thousand dollar dividend, and then let's say one hundred thousand goes to the normal preferred dividend. You know, preferred dividend contracts say each share is entitled to something I don't know six dollars or whatever the amount might be. But in this case, their normal preferred dividend. So then this hundred thousand, it gets split some way. Say. You know, another forty thousand here is the participating, participating part. So they would actually get another hundred forty, and sixty thousand would go to the common. Common stock cash dividend. That's what participating is all about. It means you get to participate as a preferred stockholder up in the growth. And that might be attractive if, you know, your brother or your sister wants you to invest in the company they're building out of their garage or something like that. You might say, well, I don't know if I want stock, but I'll issue some preferred stock. And I would like it to be participating if it really takes off. At least I'll see some upside for my risk. Something like that. Okay. Um, I'll just briefly mention preferred stock issuance, as we saw with the joint security issuance, is just like preferred stock. You'll have preferred stock par and additional paid in capital. Okay, and with respect to preferred dividends, the feature that matters is cumulative versus non-cumulative. Participating matters, but we're not going to do that one quantitatively. There's an example in this lecture note in your textbook about different conventions with respect to participating, but really you could split the participating dividend any way that two people would agree to. Um, all right, so preferred stock issuance and dividend. Uh, let's see. They're going to issue 5,000 shares of $100 par value, cumulative preferred, market price is 119. So this is 5,000 times 119. Okay. Uh, the par value is 5,000 times 100. So the remainder goes into additional paid in capital in excess of par preferred. The other way to title that account is additional paid in capital preferred. Okay, so now they declare a hundred and thirty five thousand dollar dividend. The dividend will still preferred or common goes directly to retain earnings, a reduction in retained earnings. So how do you do the split? Let's see, the FYO2 declaration. So we have to decide how the 135,000 is split up. And let's see what they'll tell us. They paid no dividend in FY1 and they declare dividend in FY2. Okay, so the way we're gonna calculate this is you go, let's put a little note here. The current year, is 5,000 times 10% times 100. So that's $10 for every 5,000. So they accumulate 50,000 a year. Last year, the, uh, the past dividend or dividends in arrears, there's only one year, so I'll just say past dividend was FY1 is another 50,000 and that's a hundred thousand this is preferred okay so the 35,000 is 135 less a hundred thousand preferred this is preferred total and what's left over goes to common common stock dividend. That goes here. That goes there. And then their dividend payables and obviously on the payment date they, they would be paid. Now the question is how does it change if it becomes non-cumulative? So we have the exact same setup but all we do is change the word cumulative to non-cumulative. What happens? 
Total cash dividend, 50000 50000 for the current year. We don't get any pass because we're non-cumulative. So 135 minus the 50 is 85. So it would end up giving more to the common stockholders. So non-cumulative is larger. If we had participating, that would be larger as well. Uh, we're going to skip this example 15 optional. And that is it for stockholders equity lecture. All right. Um, know about the participating dividend. You should know that it strictly increases the preferred stock dividend. All right. And it's a dividend in excess of the normal preferred dividend. <clears throat> but we will not do a quantitative problem.